across the UK, on DAB, online, and on your smart speaker. This is Times Radio Early Breakfast. Good morning to you, 17 minutes past five, and we've got Jason Reid with us, the UK liaison at Young Voices, which works to connect young commentators and policy makers, and indeed uh, journalists. Good morning, Jason. Morning, Callum. Thanks, Thanks for having me on. It's our pleasure. Thank you for being here. So let us start then with vaccines, shall we? Because um, this is encouraging news, uh, really, this, this new data that we've discussed with Simon this morning about how effective these vaccines are. And, of course, this is a boost, surely, for the Prime Minister and, crucially, for the Chancellor ahead of the budget tomorrow in the unlocking seems to be on track. Yes, very encouraging news. And uh, all of the data coming through, the new study today and a few more studies we've had over the last week or so, just bearing out the fact that the vaccines are even more effective than uh, lab tests said they were going to be, which suggests, so long as everything, as long as there's no uh, disaster in the next few weeks, that the lockdown, the unlockdown plan uh, is likely to stay in place and the reopening of the economy is likely to go ahead as planned, which, of course, will delight everyone in government. Very tenuously, we... uh, we can celebrate that fact. Well, yeah, indeed. And I wonder I wonder what those celebrations will look and feel like across the UK this morning as we wake up to the news that the the vaccines work, yet more in, you know, confirmation that the vaccines work and that they are very effective and that lockdown uh, or unlocking uh, is on track. Um, I wonder what the kind of mood is. Is it kind of general support, do you think, for this unlocking plan? Is that is that still in place? Broadly, I think uh, that people see the need for a, for a balanced reopening. We don't want to reopen too quickly, but we also don't want to miss this opportunity um, to reopen as soon as we can and get the economy going as soon as we can. Um, I think that people's spirits are beginning to lift because the end um, is in sight. We're seeing, for example, this morning, um, the news of, I think they're calling it a digital green pass mm. from, uh, from Europe, allowing people potentially... Um, who have been vaccinated to travel and holiday in Europe, which although there's been some controversy over the idea of vaccine passports, very understandably, um, some young people feel that perhaps it's unfair that they've sacrificed so much over the last year to protect the health of older people, and now older people who have been vaccinated have more freedom than they do. Um, but I think it's, uh, you know, freedom for some people is um, better than freedom for no one, and it's only a matter of time now, assuming that everything stays in place, um, that young people will be free to go to uh, European beaches for their summer holidays as well. Of course, the one situation we don't want to end up in is that there's some new strain which is resistant to the vaccine, mm. which emerges in uh, in Britain in the next few months, and that means that older people who are um, potentially were vaccinated earlier and may be able to go on holiday earlier than the rest of us. Um, but assuming that that doesn't happen, which relies perhaps on uh, tougher border controls than we have at the moment and a tougher quarantine, um, system, assuming that that doesn't happen, um, all the news is is good at the moment. Do you really think the issue of holidays will be that divisive between younger people and older people? Surely, it's a case of well, so be it. You know, whatever. If if somebody's vaccinated, then off they go. And also, the government's plan is that everyone will be vaccinated by by kind of mid July anyway. So actually, that 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 sort of division over vaccines and who can travel may evaporate pretty quickly. I'm inclined to agree with you. I was surprised by the uh, the amount of backlash that the idea of vaccine passports got um, from sort of people of my generation. Um, but I think, as you're right, um, you're very much right that in the next few weeks, so long as everything stays roughly on track, um, the issue will uh, cease to be an issue anyway. Yeah. Um, because the restrictions will be lifted altogether. Yeah, indeed. And uh, how we long for that day when the timing is right. Um, yes, we do. I, I know as well. Uh, one other story that we want to mention this morning um, is, I, I guess, the kind of the ongoing battle against obesity, uh, basically, uh, which I know is something that you've been um, looking at and, and writing about uh, kind of extensively in the past, because uh, there's some new research around uh, kind of the, the just how big a problem, actually, obesity is in the UK um, as well. So talk to us about this new stuff study um, that's been published this morning around kind of the reducing fat content in, in manufactured food and how that could be helpful in the, in the battle against obesity. Yeah, it's a really interesting study this morning from uh, Queen Mary University in London, suggesting that 4.5 million people, um, 4.5 million cases of people being overweight or obese could be solved just by this scheme of gradually reducing the fat content in manufactured in the, and processed foods um, over the course of a few years. And this is one of a series of um, 
really amazing scientific breakthroughs that we've had over the last few months, over the last year or so in this area, which just goes to show the, uh, the power um, that innovation has. For instance, a few weeks ago, there was a story about a diabetes drug, um, which seems to have an amazing effect um, on, on weight loss and really helps people to lose weight. Um, and uh, the scientists in that study, that was a UCL study, I think, and uh, the scientists in that study were saying that they never thought that there would be a, a drug that didn't appear to have serious side effects like this and that seems to be an alternative to bariatric surgery. Um, and so this kind of thing I would have thought would be a godsend for the government, which you would say with crossed fingers but maybe not holding a breath, means they could avoid more intrusive policies like the advertising ban and uh, like the sugar tax, which are less effectual, less effective and... Uh, have a, have a whole range of other um, horrific consequences. Uh, interesting, uh, really interesting, because it's kind of it's, it's, it's sort of ongoing struggle, isn't it, uh, in terms of, of taking on um, obesity. Um, uh, interesting as well to uh, just reflect on this story. A university has been ordered to pay a student five thousand pounds in compensation for lost teaching time during England's first lockdown. So this is the Office of the Independent Adjudicator has released a number of complaints students have made about the impact of COVID on their studies. Concerns, of course, over disrupted learning, accommodation, and missing practice elements of courses as well. Now clearly these are really difficult and um, intricate situations indeed, um, but interesting sort of to hear that there actually money could be handed out to kind of compensate for for the levels of disruption that students have experienced over the last year. Very much so. This is I think the first case of its kind this year and it's something that students have been campaigning for very fiercely over the past few months. Very understandably they feel that they've been denied the education that they're paying for with their tuition fees. Um, it does sound like this might be a one-off case in, the, in this particular case. Um, some elements of the teaching that were promised were missed and it was a practical degree. Um, and so some important, some important parts of that degree were just not delivered. Um, but no doubt this will uh, encourage students up and down the country who are campaigning um, for fee refunds and for other forms of compensation for universities that there is hope that they might be able to get something back um, as a, a small sort of recompense mm -hmm. for everything that's happened over the last year. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Jason, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us this morning. Nice to have you on the programme. Jason Reid there, UK liaison at Young Voices.